Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about open metal. And open metal has sponsored this video. So full disclosure, I get a small amount of money to talk about open metal and I can use their platform for free. But if I thought that this was not something that was interesting for part of my community, I would not have talked about this subject. So let's jump over here to my screen and here you see the Open Metal Cloud. When you have logged into your account at Open Metal, you get this screen here and you can create an organization cloud and a personal cloud. And if you want to follow along here, there is a link in the description down below that you can click into and you get a free trial that you can run this cloud and learn more about what it is all about and also try it out for yourself. So let's start and create an organization cloud here. We see here that we have a bunch of different amount of hardware that we can create. So Open Metal is a hardware as a service company with OpenStack and Ceph on top. So here we can choose that we want a small standard cloud with three servers, or we can have a large cloud with a little bit larger servers and so on. But we get three servers, however we configure this, and then you can add more servers after that. So let's start with a standard cloud here and let's give it a name. Let's call it test cloud. And I don't give it a, any description at this point. And on the next screen here, we will get an information about how we want to do the payment. And in this case, you could either say that you want to tr a trial period and then you want to pay for each month after that or each time period after that. But in this case, I want my cloud to disappear after my trial period. So I say, no, delete this after uh, 45 days. And the same goes for you if you want to do a trial. You can also say, no, just delete it when I'm done. So you can try it and there is no risk on your end that you actually got to need to pay anything. So let's deploy this. And we see here that it will deploy this cloud. It takes a little while, but we need to remember what is going on here. It's actually going out with IPMI, finding a bunch of hardware that is turned off, turn them on, and then give me access to them. So it's a very fast process to actually get free servers up and running in my own personal cloud. And because it's dedicated hardware, we don't have the actual problem of red bleed, heartbeat, and all of those uh, kind of attacks where you go through memory into other virtual hosts because these machines are your hardware at this point. Now we have a Ceph cluster, we have an open cloud cluster, for let's say 500 bucks, which is one of the tiers. But if you would have running this on your own, then you would have need this hardware and you will also need an IT professional to actually manage and fix any issues that you might have. And those goes for like 5,000 uh, US dollars per month. So it's a very affordable solution to get up and running and get 24 seven support. To get to this point where I have installed an, an OpenStack cluster with Ceph, it took me actually two weeks to do that and figure out how to do it. And then it took me two hours to do the actual video where I did the actual install. So that is a lot of time. And what I did in that video was good or what I thought was reasonable setup with a good settings and so on. But in this case, you might even get the best practices at all every stage instead of my more reasonable setup. So you get a lot of things in this package already. So now that we've started our cloud here, we can see that we have an SSH key here. And during the creation process, if I have created it from scratch, I will get a pop-up where I give them my SSH key. In this case, I, this is the second cloud that I create. I've already given them an SSH key from my client. So let's copy paste this and open a client on my end here. So now I've opened up a client here and I can just copy paste that 
SSH statement that we had earlier here into this client. Copy that over. And as I have this SSH key on this server, I will just run against the IP address here and I'm logged in. So now I'm on this service, gorgeous hippopotamus. And if I run Ceph status here, I can see that I have the gorgeous hippopotamus, the sarcastic yellow and the robust lark. And that, those are the three service, uh, servers that I'm running on at the moment. We have uh, three different OSDs on these services. We have demons active, uh, three demons active. We have 12 pools. We have eight, nine terabytes of data. And we also have some active pages here. So let's look at what we actually have in our pool here. So LS pools. So here we have the device health metrics, we have images, volumes, and VMS, and backups. That is the things that will be stored in the open uh, cloud when you are creating your different instances. You can create images, you can create volumes, you can start v VMs, and you can back up these things to your backup folder. We have a metrics pool, so there is a metrics server that service that will put that into Ceph as well. We see also that we have Manila data and Manila metadata. So there is a file system up and running already. And then we have an RGV pool as well. So we have object storage already set up. So all the three different ways of storing data in your Ceph cluster is already supported at this point from OpenStack. So you can use it however you want. So let's uh, remove that and go into our dashboard. We show our password here, click on that, and then we will go down a bit and launch Horizon. And in Horizon, we can see that we can manage all these resources and handle our own cloud. And at this point, there are US-based companies. They have the servers in US but they will open servers in the EU as well. If you're thinking about GDPR issues and so on, that could be interesting when you have companies that can't have data leaving the EU, for instance. So that problem will soon be solved, but at the moment they are a US based company. So let's see which services is actually available to us here under system information. We can see that we have the Keystone service, so for identity, the heat service for orchestration, the netra service for networking, so the neutron networking service. We have the AODH service for alarms. So if we have set up spe specific triggers, then it will send out an alarm to email or so, so on if we have any problems in our cluster. We have a Swift service for object storage. We have Gnoshi, which is a metric service that will fetch a different metrics from our cloud and then display them in a good way so we can actually see what's going on in our servers. Um, we have a Cinder service here, volume three. So that's how we store volumes. We have the Octavia load balancer so we can set that in front of any of our VMs and then load balancing uh, the traffic between them. Uh, we have the Watcher and this is an infrastructure optimization service that you can set up in different modes in order to move your VMs around. Uh, so for instance, you could say that I want this to be optimized for efficiency and then it will move things around for that. You can say that you want it to be optimized for maintenance and then it will move the VMs around for that or just a balance mode and move it around in a balanced manner. Uh, and then we have the placement service, uh, play service that I installed in my um, VM my installation as well uh, for actually keeping track on where things should be placed when you're creating VMs. Uh, we have the Magnum service, we say it's an infrastructure container service that is for Kubernetes orchestration. We have the Nova service, which is the compute unit where service that will create VMs that run on different hardware. Uh, we have the legacy service for the compute as well, if you have services that require that. 
Um, we have a, also Cinder 2, so we have two different kinds of volume saving. If we have older VMs that could be only be run on the, the Volume Manager 2, we have Glance for all our images needs. So in order to get started here, I want to first off create a key. So I go in under Compute, go into the Key Store, and then I will import my SSH key here. It's an SSH key, it's my key. And that is so we can actually log into our things that we create later on. And I also want to create a network. So I have a local network that I can install things into. So we have the external network here. So you could create services that are on the external network. If we go in here and create my net. So this is a local network, the subnet, my sub. And then we can say that this is 10.10.10.24. .10 .10 uh, and we don't have any gateway IP. We can say 10.10.0 .10 .10 there, for instance. But it will create that if we don't. And, and then we just will create this network. Enable DCP, it's also good to have. So now we have an, a network here that is not external, it's my local internal network. So now we can create an instance here. So either we go to this page here and create an instance, or we can go to images and see what's actually available to us. First off, we have the Amphora, and this is an HA proxy Ubuntu Focal. So it's more something that will be used by the system when you create a load balancer and not something that you will create an image from. The same goes for this Fedora Core OS, which is used when you create an a uh, Kubernetes cluster, so it's not something that you will install yourself. But we have a couple of CentOS, we have a couple of Debian's and an Ubuntu. So let's launch an Ubuntu here and we call this my instance. Uh, next screen we have the source, either we could choose an image or we can start a volume. So if we already have created a volume, ran something on it, we can boot that volume again. Uh, but I will go from an instance, I will create a 10 gigabyte volume and I have this Ubuntu vol uh, focal here. If we go to the next one, we can choose how much resources we want to dedicate for this. For instance, the GP1 Nano is one virtual CPU, um, 512 megabytes ROM, 10 gigabytes of disk, root disk of 10 gigabytes and then an ephemeral disk. We could also go all the way to the very large one, but I will take this nano image here. We can go over to network, and here I want to activate my subnetwork. And no network ports, and yeah, here we have the security groups. Important here is to have the SSH ingress if you want to log into it. We can also have HTTP and HTTPS if we want to set up our own um, web server. Uh, key pair, we, my key is already installed here and configuration, server groups, and so on. There is a lot of configuration you can do here. And then we launch our instance. That will move us over to the instance page. And in this page, we can see the instance is starting up. It take, might take a little while to get it started. Another thing that you can do here now that we have an instance up and running, we can log into it and work with it. We can go into the computer infra and our clusters here. So this is a Kubernetes cluster and you can create up to 20 Kubernetes clusters if you need. So you can have multiple different clusters. Uh, let's create uh, my cluster here. We can choose a template. So this is a Kubernetes version 1.18.2 in our availability soon of Nova, our key pair, my key. If we go over and set size, we can have two master nodes that is small. We can have three worker nodes, which is small. And it, we can also say that it should auto scale worker nodes when required. And we can set a network here. So either we can have a private network only, or we can have a public network if we want. And uh, we can enable the lo uh, load balancer for master nodes if we want and so on. So there is a bunch of different configuration here as well. And now we have a Kubernetes cluster up and running. Took a while for it to actually get up and started, but when you have it, then you can push more instances into it and run whatever you want. So in conclusion, 
What is OpenStack and Open Metal all about? Well, it's a way for you to get hardware in the cloud in a very powerful way because you have an OpenStack solution with a Ceph backend and also the availability to run Kubernetes or other VMs in the cloud for you. So look at it as you get a server closet in the cloud where you can put in hardware as you like and you don't need to pull all the extra network cables, you don't need to handle acquisition of new hardware and everything that is required in a data center pretty much in order to get things up and running. Here you get servers for a very affordable price that you can run in their data center. And if you need more, yeah, give them a little bit more money and they spin up another server for you. And then uh, you are up and running and just can load balance your things out for the most efficiency or the best use case for your workload. So if you're running, for instance, a WordPress blog, this is not for you. But if you have a mid-sized to a large company that needs ac uh, access to a bunch of different servers and in order to run your company, this could be a very uh, good solution for you in order to uh, get up and running and also to scale uh, as your company grows. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below and I will try to answer them. And if I can't, I will send them through to a professional that can give you a good answer for your question. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.